Hello, we are the three Blue Hill Heritage Trust interns um, for the summer of 2022. Thank you so much for tuning into our webinar. My name is Apple. I am from Castine, Maine. Um, I go to Whitman College in Washington State. I'm an environmental studies and politics major. And I first heard about the internship um, from my friend, Marin, who was one of the summer interns last year. And he had such amazing stories to tell that I knew I wanted to apply as well. Um, and I'm Emily, I'm from Washington DC and I go to Connecticut College. And I first heard about the internship through, I believe my grandmother who has had a house in Cassie for about 20 years. So I'm familiar with the peninsula and she just knew of all the amazing work that the trust had been doing. And my name's Haley, I'm from Connecticut. I'm an ecolog ecological restoration major at Paul Smith's College, which is in upstate New York. And I think I first heard about this internship through the Clapp family. All right, and this is our slideshow. Off. Interns extraordinaire. All right, so this is the three of us. <laughs> and we already did the introduction, so let's go to the next slide. All right, so um, we are, all three of us are James W. Dow interns, but how we're funded um, and how we came to the trust is a little bit different. So um, I am funded through the Jeannie Becton pledge and Jeannie Becton is um, a local donor who um, started a fund to provide the Blue Hill Heritage Trust with one local intern um, in the summer. And I am funded through the operations budget, which is supported by donors. And I'm the Maine Coast Heritage Trust intern, which I'm funded through the Richard G. Rockefeller internship program. So because we're all funded through different methods, the way we came to the trust was a little bit different. Um, Emily and I did our orientation week on the Blue Hill Heritage Trust um, property. And so the photo on the left, you can see the two of us with Sandy learning how to do, use a head uh, brush saw. And then we spent a full afternoon chainsaw training. Um, and we, the first week we spent here getting oriented with the work that the trust was doing. Um, so mine was a little different. I spent four days at the Friends Camp in South China, Maine with the other Maine Coast Heritage Trust interns. And throughout this time, we all learned about invasive plants in Maine, um, conservation easements, and we also had a full day of chainsaw training down in Rockland, where we got to open up chainsaws, see how the inside works, put them back together, and then use how to learn how to use them safely. Sweet. Cool. So that goes into stewardship, which was a huge component of this internship. And that was mainly through um, working with George and Sandy and Andrew. Um, so these three photos all happen to be from bog bridging, which is something that we've been doing over the past month, I wanna say. Um, and so that entailed hauling cedar wood with some very, very generous volunteers, um, and then trimming that wood and drilling it together. Um, and it was just a super, super fun process. This was at Penny's Preserve. Um, so stewardship has many different components, but in the photo on the left, you can see us with uh, Sandy learning to use the sawmill to make those cedar planks that we then use for bog bridging in Penny's Preserve. And it's pretty cool that the trust owns, um, we own our own sawmill. Um, so we were able to see the process from start to finish of like getting, getting the big trees, seeing them delivered and then like putting them through the sawmill and then building the bridges off of them. And then on the photo on the left, that was one of our first conservation conservation easement monitoring projects with George. So um, you may be familiar, but there's sort of two classifications for properties that the trust manages. One is fee properties, which is like properties or land that the trust owns, we own ourselves. Um, and then there's also conservation easement properties. So the, those are properties that are still owned by landowners but the trust holds an easement on them, which restricts um, 
the building that can be done on that property and the way that the land can be used so that it's protected for conservation purposes. Part of having a conservation easement is that you then need to monitor it and make sure that the, the woods is still growing where it's supposed to and that someone hasn't come in and cut it down and that there aren't new structures impeding um, soil quality. So George, we would walk with George and monitor, monitor the conservation easement um, properties, but also a big part of stewardship is making sure that you maintain that relationship with those landowners that you're working closely with, because it's where things can go sour is if there's not good com uh, communication between landowners and um, the Blue Hill Heritage Trust and maintaining those relationships is the best way to keep everyone on the same page and working well together. And in this slide, uh, <laughs> we're working with Sandy and Surrey Forest to do some forest inventories and wetland inventories. So on the left, we are conducting some forest inventory plots where we go out into the woods, we set up a circle and then along that circle, we, can, we make a center point and run lines and transects throughout the circle. And we record the diameter of the trees to get an idea of how old the forest is, how it continues to grow over time. And so we can go back to these plots and keep recording data in the future. Um, and for the wetland inventories in the picture on the right, we put down this square plot um, where we look inside and take note of all the different plant species within that plot and how much area they cover. And the great thing about this is that it can be, this data can be brought back to the office and given to Chrissy, where she can use this data in her own area of expertise, which is grant writing. And she can use this to either um, get new properties or to fund different projects on existing properties. So that takes us right into development, which was another huge facet of the internship. Um, we were fortunate enough to kind of shadow Chrissy through all of the moving parts that she is so important to managing. Um, so on the left, we were researching and writing grants. Um, so like going through old grants for some really important projects such as Walmatogus, which is a huge feat this, for this summer. Um, and just looking at the details that are important to certain foundations and kind of seeing how the meaningfulness of the property translates onto paper, because that's a huge part of this particular trust, I think. Um, and so grant writing is a huge part of fundraising for land trusts. And then the other huge component of that is donors. So on the right, we were washing dishes for the Heritage Society and Stewardship Circle cocktail party that happened this past month which was a huge success and so much fun just to be able to connect with donors and meet new faces. Um, and another really cool opportunity we had was attending board meetings and subcommittee meetings. So seeing the different wheels turning um, kind of on the bureaucratic side of things, as well as meeting with individuals um, about kind of finances and just career opportunities and pathways through that. Um, just navigating the different parts of a nonprofit and seeing, yeah, how land trusts are maintained. And so another big part of this internship is the outreach side of it, which we were lucky enough to shadow under Lander, who's the outreach co coordinator for Blue Hill Heritage Trust. Um, at first, we got to sit in on a few of her events and see what topics she chose, how she organizes them and gets them started and how she executes them. Um, and from there, we got to go into the office and then promote her events. So that means sending it into different news stations, radio stations, and seeing how the word spreads and how people engage with these promotions and then sign up. And then the biggest part of this was that we each got to make our own outreach event which we got to choose what topic we wanted to do, whether that's something we were already knowledgeable in or interested in and wanted to know more about. And we got to create flyers for it, send out promo for it, and then talk about it or just leave the event. 
And so this past Wednesday, I got to hold my own outreach event, which um, I chose to talk about pollinators to children in the area. And we learned about what types of pollinators are around here, why they're so important, and also um, learn about monarchs and how they can raise them at home. And then from there, the kids um, engaged with a scavenger hunt around Leslie Clapp's garden, where they got to see different types of pollinators and flowers for themselves. And once they finished with that, they came back and made seed balls with different native plants so they could take them home and plant them in their own garden. And this Monday, <laughs> if any of you see this in the next two days, we have an outreach event on Monday, August 8th at 1 p.m. At, at Carter Nature Preserve on the ecology and economy of oysters. <laughs> Woo! You want to take this one? Sure. So, um, kind of in opposition to Haley, who is a pollinator connoisseur. Um, Apple and I are just really <laughs> interested in the resurgence of oyster populations in the area because they're crucial to um, aquatic ecosystem ecosystemic health and also the local economy. So we are collaborating with Frenchman Bay Oyster Company um, and they will be leading a walk and talk through Carter Nature Preserve where um, there will be an oyster taste test. So again, mm -hmm. if you're seeing this before the event, make sure to sign up because it's going to be very <laughs> awesome. <laughs> um, um, so the photo on the left, um, Emily and I are speaking into a phone where we're doing PR for the oyster event. Um, and actually, we're, it was to Star 97.7, which is a local radio company. So it was kind of cool that our... our um, like voice memo blurb dub. Mm -hmm. it dub is on the uh radio getting broadcasted around the peninsula and then the photo on the right we are probably emailing robin graham of frenchman bay oysters we as we are one to do yes frequently <laughs> mm. so another part of outreach uh was working the farmer's market so Haley and i both had the opportunity to do that um on two separate saturdays and that was just a really good time we got to kind of have face-to-face -face interactions with a lot of community members that either are already affiliated with the trust and already know about the work that we do or don't know about the work that we do. And it's just really a good opportunity to meet people and educate people and just be a resource. Um, and it was just a super good time. Um, Another part of kind of falls under outreach, kind of falls under stewardship, but Andrew, who's in the foreground in the photo on the left, taking the selfie, he's the stewardship, former intern, um, current stewardship coordinator. I don't know exactly the title, but he works stewardship for the Blue Hill Heritage Trust. So these were two um, volunteer events that we participated in. The photo on the left we are um, cutting down Japanese knotweed at the newly acquired property, Edgehill property in Sedgwick, Maine. It's super gorgeous. Definitely check it out. Um, but that was a really fun day and we got to meet and hang out with a bunch of really cool people who were also locally, who are also super interested in conservation locally. And then the photo on the right, um, we were picking up trash at Meadowbrook Mill Stream, which is both an accessible trail and a restored alewife passageway, fishway. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and formerly, before the trust um, owned the property, was a uh, like a local dumping ground for um, trash. Trash. Um, so we were out there digging up like old dumps, old dump trash, piles of trash, and it was kind of cool. There was like, you know, kitchen appliances from the 1950s. Um, as well as a duck. As well as a Hans duck. Is which, holding yes. A, a, Hans is a holding. fake duck. <laughs> <laughs> um, so super cool to see it, to like see, you know, kind of a little bit of history in the trash, but also even cooler to take it to the dump and put it where it belongs. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> oh, so another big part of the internship was maintaining some of our bigger properties, which was included mowing them because they're just so big. So Sandy, who's the forester here, she taught us how to use the mower, how to drive it, how to turn it on, and how to use the mower on the back. 
And from there, we went off on our own and we mowed the loop and the little spurs on Surrey Forest. And from there, we took the tractor to Meadowbrook and we began mowing there as well. Um, it's been a trying. It's been trying. It's broken a few times. And by a few, I mean five. And <laughs> we've come back every time. We're so resilient and <laughs> yes. we powered through it. You can see in the picture all the way on the right, um, is my genuine reaction in the moment to getting stuck in a marsh, which was, it was fun. And we had to pull it out with the truck, which you can see in the middle picture. That's all of us hauling it out. And yeah, it's, it's a major love hate yeah. relationship for mm -hmm. sure. Um, I mean, when it worked, it was, it was so much fun. We got to ride around for hours, just listening to tunes, having a little bit of a karaoke session I, I definitely spooked a couple deer for sure with my just confidence this was probably one final thing i'll add is this was probably the hardest and most frustrating part of the internship but there was fun times to be had as well yeah certainly good memories as you can see here and this was one of my favorite memories of um the whole summer but so haley in that photo you saw on the previous slide where haley <laughs> reaction to her um the the rest marsh. stuck in the marsh that ended up being like a whole day event trying to get it out um and emily and i were actually at carter nature preserve during doing trail work and at carter nature preserve there are wild oysters growing so we heard about all of the tra trials and tribulations <laughs> happening at meadowbrook um with haley and george was there helping her get try to get the tractor out so we harvested some wild oysters and brought them over to meadowbrook and at the very end of the day had ourselves a little snack and it was a it was tough a day but a really nice treat at the end of it and it's one of my favorite memories of the summer mm -hmm. <laughs> mm, and another then, trial yeah another, <laughs> another trial was the graffiti on the murphy trail which is another accessible trail that we have um so we made quick work of it. We went down to Hammond Lumber, we got some sandpaper and we scrubbed it right out really quick, just like that. But unfortunately that's something that we have to deal with not too often, but more often than you'd think is mm -hmm. vandalism on some of our trails. It happened a couple times this summer. So don't do it. No, <laughs> it's bad. <laughs> Uh, oh no! Oh, no. <laughs> oh, this was supposed to, we were supposed to wait for this one. But one of the um, I totally forgot. One of the coolest parts of being an intern at Blue Hill Heritage Trust is that within the first like week, um, George and Chrissy and everybody really, but George and Chrissy really emphasized this. They came to us and they said, "We want to know what you want to get out of this internship. So if you find like a particular." Um, if you're more interested in stewardship or more interested in outreach or development, whatever it may be, we want to be able to help you, um, like, spend more time doing what it is you're interested in. And the three of us are all super interested in conservation, but we all kind of come at it from different angles. But the one thing we all agreed that we really wanted was biceps like Sandy's. And we're happy to report that yeah, we've been, we've made progress. <laughs> we've made progress. Sure. And we saw well, that bog bridging probably. Uh, totally. And lifting tractors. All right. So now I think we just have some fun photos from mm -hmm. our time. We made some really good friends. made some really good memories and some yeah. good friends. And it was just such a blast. So let's see. Oh, so this past week it was super, super toasty. Mm -hmm. And Chrissy had the idea that we hop on over to the Blue Hill Town Park and jump off the big rock. And actually in this photo is former intern Edward, which we all jumped off together and it was just a great, it was just a great intern moment. Mm -hmm. And then we got ice cream. It was really fun. Um, and then on the left here, we have a photo from a volunteer day at Penny's Preserve, which we were luckily, we were lucky enough to have us guided around by David Chapman and Joe Barrett, who are the um, stewards for Penny's Preserve. And then on the right, we have a photo of George um, attempting to do a handstand. He wanted to know on the fun and he sure had his fill. <laughs> um, what do we have? On the left here, this is us kind of breaking ground on the accessible trail at Hundred Acre Woods, which is just a super fun and like exciting thing to get a jump start on. And that was a cool project because we were able to like like scope out where we thought the trail should go 
and then cut it and then get the preliminary cut down. Another crew eventually came in because it was going to be an accessible trail, which is above our pay grade. But <laughs> um, but the grand opening is this Thursday. So really cool to like start a project, see it through and then be there for it's like totally. launch into the world. Well. And now we're actually we just finished up writing some grants for a new accessible trail. Mm -hmm. And so just seeing like how impactful that can be totally fueled the development side of things. Um, and then on the right, this is just a selfie with us and Andrew at Blue Hill Mountain, which was a fun day. Um, mm -hmm. And this is us with Jim Dow, who without whom we could not have been a part of this internship. Seriously, such a just great contributor, mentor, everything. Super grateful to have yeah, met him. Maybe seeing this. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh -huh. It's been a super amazing experience in summer and we're really grateful. Yeah. And it's the man himself. Yeah.